What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about whiskey, Junicorn and Nginx. We are going to discuss why you need these things and how they work together with Jenga. And honestly when I started preparing for this video I was thinking that I could explain the whole life cycle of Jenga framework but turned out that I was wrong and just explaining whiskey, Junicorn and Nginx takes quite some time and if you can resist the urge of clicking away right now and watching some cat videos, PewDiePie, whatever you like, then this video should help you better understand the process of deploying Django application. And I hope that after watching this video, you will understand what the heck is Whiskey. Because for me personally, Whiskey.py file was some kind of magic. I didn't understand why does this even exist. So if that sounds like not a waste of time for you, then let's begin. I was thinking about how to explain these things to you and I think that the best way will be to show an example. So let's create a simple Jenga server and host it on DigitalOcean. When you successfully created and connected to your DigitalOcean droplet through SSH, the first thing that we need to do is we need to install some Python dependencies and we only need Jenga and Junicorn, only these two libraries. So let's do that right now, let's install these libraries. Now we can create a Jenga project. What we usually do after we create a Jenga project is we type python manage that file, run server, right? in the terminal. Run server management command is a command that built into Jenga and the purpose of this command is to run a development server. And if you are paying attention right now, I said development server, which means that this server is only suitable for development and not production. And if you open Jenga documentation, you will see that it warns you to never use this on production. This management command is not scalable, it's not reliable, should be used only locally. So instead of using this management command, we are going to use Junicorn. And Junicorn is a library that is battle tested, it's reliable and it's also scalable. And you can scale it by creating multiple workers of different types. Junicorn is a whiskey server and you can run any web application using Junicorn if it supports whiskey. So you can run not only a Jenga application, but you can also run, for example, Flask application because Flask also supports whiskey. And whiskey is a protocol. It's a standard of communication between a web server and a web application, basically between Junicorn and Django Flask. So the web server should know how to speak to the web application and the web application should know how to respond to the web server. They both should talk using the same language and the language is Whiskey. As for the Whiskey itself, if you want to create a Whiskey compatible Python application ourselves, we need to define a callable object that takes two arguments and this callable object should return a list of strings or an iterable of strings. And here's the most basic example of WSGE compatible script in Python. And if we want to test this function, all we need to do is we need to specify a path to this function when we run a Junicorn server. And if we open the page now, we should see hello world text. So the function is working. As for arguments of the function, the first argument is environ. It's a dictionary that has different information about the request that the browser sent to the server. The Junicorn gets the request, it populates the dictionary, and when it calls process HTTP request, it passes this dictionary as a parameter. As for the second argument, start response, it's a function that we need to call when we want to send a status code and headers of the response. Now let's get back to Django. Django has whiskey.py file that is generated automatically when we create a Django project. And if we open this file, we will see the Django calls get whiskey application function. And this function returns a whiskey compatible callable object as well. So this callable object also takes two arguments, environment and start response, and it also returns an iterable of strings. So basically it's the same callable object as we had before. The only difference is that the callable object that built into Django is much more complicated than the one that we had. Okay, let's run Junicorn Whiskey server for our Django application. So right now we are running a web server on port 8000, but that is not everything that we need to run. We are not finished, just Junicorn and Django are not enough. We also need a web server like Nginx. And this web server is going to interface with the outside world. Basically, 
all the requests that the browser sends will be handled and processed by Nginx. Now, here is how Nginx, Junicorn and Django work together. So if the browser wants dynamically generated content, like an HTML page, then Nginx will pass this request to Junicorn and Django because Django is responsible for generating HTML pages. And when the job is done, when Django generated the page, then Junicorn will send this page to Nginx and Nginx will send this page back to the browser. However, you don't need to pass the request to Junicorn all the time. For example, if the browser wants media or static files, then there is no need to pass the request to Junicorn. Nginx can serve these files directly to the browser. And that's basically the flow. So now let's try to quickly install Nginx and run a web server. After installing Nginx, we need to configure our firewall. Basically, we need to allow incoming traffic on port 80 and port 443 if you want to set up HTTPS. Since we don't need HTTPS, let's just open port 80. Now let's create a configuration file. As you can see from the configuration file, if the location is root, then we just proxy requests to Junicorn. If the location is static, then there is no need to proxy requests, we can just serve static files directly. Now when we have the configuration file, we need to remove the default Nginx configuration file and we need to add the configuration file that we just created to sites enabled folder. So let's do that right now. And the only thing left is to restart the Nginx. Now let's open the browser and check whether it's working or not. As you can see, everything is working. And that's basically everything that I wanted to discuss today. And as I said before, when I started preparing for this video, I was thinking about explaining the whole life cycle of Django. But as you can see, just explaining Whiskey, Junicorn and Nginx took quite a lot of time. If you are interested in learning the life cycle of Django, leave a comment below and I'll probably make a video about that. And if you are still watching this video, I appreciate it so much. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dennis, and this channel is all about mastering web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing. And if you'd like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.